Hello, my name is Marcus Brand. I'm the head of mission of International Idea for Myanmar. And today I have the great uh, pleasure and honor to speak with Kure, who is the chairman of the Kareni National Progressive Party and also the chairman of the Interim Executive Council of Kareni State. And uh, I would like to talk to you today about your vision for the new federal democratic Myanmar and in particular for Kareni State that you have dedicated so much of your life to uh, and uh, you have achieved a lot. You have put Kareni State on the map, so to say, and uh, you have already built an impressive range of partnerships and institutions uh, that uh, much has been talked about in the current context of uh, Myanmar. So could you maybe just tell us a little bit of what makes Kareni State stand out, what makes it different, what makes it special, and how do you see the current situation evolving? Good morning, everybody. My name is Kure. Actually, I have been struggling together with the Korean National Progressive Party when I was a very young. To this day, already with the KMPP for over 47 years. It is my long services contributing my side to the cause of the Karani people. To talk about the Karani, we Karani is the smallest state with a smaller population within Bama, Sukho, Myanmar today. We Karani less known by the outside world. So today, we Karani people together with the other part of Myanmar people, we share the same suffering for long enough for over 30 years since the independent day of Myanmar. Uh, Kareni initially, historically, was an independent state, free from outside power. But starting in 1947, we Kareni incorporated into newly free Burma. Starting from 1948 up to now, we are part of the Myanmar today. For Kareni people, uh, as we uh, prefer to call ourselves as a Kareni, representing all sub ethnic living in the state. But soon after independence, uh, under the uh, Myanmar government, uh, newly founded state government, recall the Korean name into Kaya, we solely representing a major South ethnic living in Korean Kaya, South ethnic people, making the his Korean history to misunderstand and uh, forgetting the past. Uh, it is so pity for our Karani people harmoniously living together for century of century from the very beginning of the Karani state where we start forming the country. So today we are more prefer to call ourselves as a Karani as we did call ourselves before. So today I will basically prefer to call myself or also the people of the Karani and the state as a Karani, representing all the South ethnic people living in the state. Today, according to my Australia in the struggle movement for over 70 years, I have seen and written with my own eyes, many people have been abandoned the villages or town or from fam separated from family and uh, fleeing the country from time to time due to the oppressive government that we do have in the country. To be honest with you all, not only the Korean people, even other ethnic people in the Shang, Kachin, Chin, Korean, Mo, and uh, even sometimes in the heartline of Nyama people as well suffering in the same way or in different way as well. There is 
while we have suffered under our own government that ruling the country for many, many years. Today, especially uh, in brief, starting from 2021 up to now, three years time, and now we are getting into four years of the people revolution. Johnny Hines with us, as we have long been struggle, now in the in armed struggle, we didn't go anywhere long enough, suffer badly, and also even some Korean people flee the country and take refuge in neighboring country as a refugee. And now some of them have resettled in third countries. Uh, even they are quite missing their home to return one day. That might be the dream of all Korean people living in not only in the countries, even in the border. Uh, also now today, uh, we just roughly estimate the population of the state. Not more than 400,000. The population of Ukraine is the last population compared to other states or region. So now today, in three years time, over 300,000 out of 400,000 are fleeing from the home, living in the jungle, moving from place to another, facing with the, all fronts of the challenges and difficulties are more intense today as the SAC, the SAC, or uh, the coup makers are uh, intensively launching a military office, killing the people, not solely targeted to the fighters who go against them. Today, they are intentionally killing their own people, not only in Korea, even across the Myanmar, particularly in Chin State, Sagai region, Magui region, Aetanandri, and uh, even now, Korea. Uh, other part of the country as well. <clears throat> so today, based on my experience along the years, it is what should we call today the struggle that we are in. I prefer to call it as a people revolution rather than the revolution or spring revolution because a large number of the people themselves get involved and take an arms and go against the coup makers. Now we are getting to four years time, working hand in hand, uh, helping each other morally and materially in many different ways. We are supporting each other. Today we have to stand together to fight against the unjust. Mm. Because we all dream for a better future. Mm. For us, we have been calling for building a, a new fairy union country long enough. So today, it is the right time for us to materialize or to realize our dream coming into action. Mm. So the, it is the right time for all of us to come together, mm. be united. If you are not united, we cannot be materialize our dream as well. Mm. That is what I understand. For Ukraine people today, people view that we are more united than other people inside Myanmar. It is likely to be true, but uh, not easy to be there, not easy to be here, because we have been invest our time long enough. We struggle very well, very hard to be here. Especially, I'm more focusing on the young people because we all understand, we all argue that the young people are the future of the country. They are the leaders of the future. That is the key reason that I am more intentionally uh, encourage the young people to get involved in all part of the struggle by themselves, to have their own experience and learning things with them 
by themselves mm. to be able to be somewhere and take it late. That is my understanding and also my vision for the future. Mm. Corey, can I ask you, how have you been able to build the interim institutions uh, in Kareni State in collaboration with different partners who were opposed uh, pre pre in previous times during the elections, for example? You have actually been able to build that collective leadership that is envisioned in the Federal Democracy Charter and you are also playing an active part in the national collective leadership in the uh, various uh, institutions and, uh, and councils that have been created, including through some representatives in the NUG. You work very closely with the NUG, with the NUCC. What has been making it so different now in the last three years to, to get this struggle so far? Uh, three years ago, many people did not expect uh, the resistance to last so long. Uh, to get so much energy from the young generation. What has been the difference now that, uh, that, uh, that now we seem so much closer to achieving your long-term goal? Well, originally, the policy of the KPP where they start forming the armed struggle from the very beginning, the policy was to regain Korean independence. But I, that independence policy just ended at the end of the 2000. At the end of the 2000, together with me and other young pe people, especially the young leader within the KFPP, we changed the policy <clears throat> from independence to federal democratic union to be able to materialize the federalism in the country as a whole to harmoniously to live together with the other different people in the country. That will be the only uh, better way to expect to see a better future for all people living in the country. That is our young people at that time view, based on the political dynamic at that time. And just to be able to materialize that vision, we gradually move into bringing more and more the young people into armed struggle and also encouraging the young people living in the country to come to aware how the federal system is what, how the federalism can be sought out our long arm struggle or making our differences put it into a map and also coming together, united together and making those countries strong and to be able to sort out all our differences in the country. Mm. That will be the only way that we can overcome our long, our chronic arm conflict or struggle. Mm. Based on that, gradually we currently more focusing on the young people, breaking more into political arena to get aware of all different concepts of the system in the country, how bad we are, how we can best serve our people, not only the Korean people, but the people of Myanmar as a whole. Just because of this vision, right after the 2021 military coup to this day, we are more aware that uh, we need to get further beyond our limit by cooperating, coordinating with the other part of the country who are also sharing the same suffering, who are also sharing the same vision for the country as we do. Just because of the reason, now right after the forming of the NUG and NUCC, we are deeply getting involved and participating in the process and also making the Federal Democratic Charter and also largely meeting in and out, in and out, sometimes in person, sometimes in venture, online meeting, talking about the policy and talking about the unity 
talking about cooperation, coordination among us. It is how we work together. The more we meet each other, the, the longer we talk about our future. We feel that we are more closer and closer today. Mm. We have more mutual understanding among us. And now we are gradually moving into mutual trust. Mm. But we still need to go far when we are talking about the mutual trust. Mm. Because we have been free guy or also divided for law in a, a modern society. Just because of the misinterpretation on our history and also limitation where we are living and surviving inside the country. We have been left out outside the country and also isolating ourselves from outside world for loud enough. So the country just opened up and touching ourselves with the outside world and community by talking and connecting with the outside world. Mm. So now today we all understand that uh, we have to work together. We have to be together. We have to share the same suffering. We have to share the same cause. We have to be together. If we really willing to see ourselves to enjoy a better future, we have to do something. If we do not move anywhere, <clears throat> If we just uh, idle, not talking, walking, nothing will come to us because nothing is free. Mm. We have to invest, we have to make a move. To be there, that is why we are engaging mm. one another now, but uh, we are not and, uh, just simply there. Father, we still do need support from outside the country. Mm. But I don't mean that change will come by outside. No. Mm. If we really want to see a better change, the change might come inside the country. A man was uh, that is how I understand. Mm. But uh, the change cannot simply come through military means. I do understand that all the problems that we do have among us must be sort of peacefully at the negotiation table uh, through dialogue or consultation among us. That's what I believe in. Mm. So that is now we are moving into. Mm. In uh, your, among the challenges that you have taken on is uh, also to lead the Interim Executive Council of Karenin State. Could you describe briefly how that works? what you have been achieving and what you're trying to do, uh, what the main challenges are and uh, how have you found the people to work with uh, to do this? Well, I started in 2021, right after a peaceful demonstration by the people across the country, oppressed by the coup maker. Finally, they make up their mind to take an adjoining hand with us. Since that we start forming the current state consultative council among the different stakeholders within the country, with a very a rough uh, structure and also policy for the current state consultative council. But uh, after one year experience under the formation of the KSCC, we realized that there are there were so many challenges and difficulties among the members of the KSC in dealing with the challenges that we were facing on the ground to address the problem, to solve out the problem. were so difficult and they struggled very, very, very hard. Based on that bitter experience, among was said, we reviewed the KSCC formation at a policy that we have been drafted for the KSCC and that making a new policy which is we call entry arrangement for a new current future and that uh, we reform the KSCC and that uh, we separate the KSCC task by 
forming the Interim and Security Council to implement all the policy made by KSCC. And also further, we are also experience the problem that happening on the ground. There were so many cases happening. Destabilization are bad on the ground. And that are we are seriously also taking into account about the judiciary system mm. to be considered as well. Mm. And that finally we start forming the interior security council, which is I'm taking a lead. And that came out with the uh, procedure and that further we come up with uh, a different department so far. And also now we also separate the legislative body with the 2020 general election elected MPs within the state as well. They are mandated to take care of the legislation works apart from the judiciary system and also making the policy by the KSCC as well. And now the formation of the IEC, in short, we still facing a number of the challenges. At the same time, we are gradually making some achievement as well, but we still have a, a lot of the challenges to be addressed, making all issue to be met, the needs of the people as well. Because as I said earlier, over 300,000 out of the 400,000 of the state populations are suffer and also living away from home. They are still unable to go home. All their homes are already destroyed. So they need to rebuild a new community of their own. We do have uh, such a challenge today. If you look at the house, we are facing with a shortage of medication, uh, medicine, uh, other utilities, facilities of the um, infrastructure as well. If you look at the education, uh, we are lack of all sorts of the uh, teacher and also the teaching class building as well, you see. We do not have a proper infrastructure. Mm. So people are struggling, uh, voluntarily working within the community of their own. They are badly struggle, hard enough. We try our best for IEC. Yeah, we try our best to be able to support all those areas gradually, step by step. But uh, we, by working together with the community themselves, we believe that we one day we can be able to fulfill the needs of the people mm. who are in need. Mm. So now, under the formation of the IEC, we are more focusing on the participation. There must be inclusiveness, and also there must be also gender balance as well. That is why we are struggling to be there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we still have to have uh, challenges. Mm. We are still not really there, but uh, the needs are huge. The problem or the challenges are huge as mm. well. So we just simply struggle and try our best to address all the, those challenges to be met. Mm. And even after the hopefully soon end of the war of the People's Revolution, there will be a significant challenge during the transition period in order to stabilize the situation, uh, but also to bring back economic recovery, create jobs, rebuild infrastructure. What is your vision for that transitional period? And in what way can you already prepare for that? And in what way can you see uh, some kind of reconciliation also taking place uh, with the people who are still, let's say, on the other side at this point? And what in particular do you see as the role of the international community? How can we international organizations make sure that you have what you need, that you are able to serve your people and your communities effectively? 
Now today, not only now, sorry from 2021, we have been start engaging with the international community to come for hope, just simply for our suffering people. We still engaging more and more, but uh, the more we engage with the international community, the more we realize that First, we need to stabilize our situation and uh, we have to make our side to be somewhere, to be trusted and able to cooperate with us in the way that they really want to see. That is the reason that now we <coughs> consult with the KSC to come up with a transition execution. So we do really hope that uh, the IEC must be one day turning into transitional period, making ourselves as a, a real state government to fully administer our state affairs. That is our one of the, our key message to the people. So now, the process of the drafted transitional constitution is underway. At the same time, we are in also looking into all different departments, making the policy, and also recruiting more services within the different area as well, with the experienced people inside the country, even uh, who are willing to support us from outside as well. Uh, we are more seeking for technical support and also financial support to the people as well. And now, we realize that uh, the international community is more willing to support us. But uh, the challenge is how? That is the, a big question. So now, today we are together looking a better way how best the international community can support our people. It is our key uh, mandate or duty of the IAC and also KSC themselves also looking into and working together now. So we frequently meet each other all the time, uh, not simply talking to each other, but uh, working together on the ground as well, touching with the people, addressing the issue or problem facing among the community as well. So now today, by touching ourselves with the people and witnessing the, the needs of challenges, of the community. Now we are more and more uh, having an opportunity to share and uh, update with the international community to aware about. So the community around the world are almost also getting more interested to support us. Not only the Karani, where we address the Karani problem, we are also part talking the suffering of the other part of the country as well, especially in Chin, Sagai Magui, Karen, the Nandri, and also in Shang, and Kachin as well. We do all engaging with one another all the time, sharing all the updates and also the ground situation mm. as well, making the world know, mm. not forgetting our cause. Mm. So that is how we IEC is uh, engaging not only within the stakeholder in the state, but also with the other stakeholder mm. in other part of the country, and mm. also further getting in touch with the international community, mm. consistent, consistently, mm. and also engaging not only engaging simply with them, mm. how best we can uh, come up with a. a a better strategy as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. uh, today, based on my experience, uh, the international community is more focusing on uh, technical support, where they can easily can support us in an effective way. So now we try to normalize all those, uh, normalize or sustainable all those uh, assistance coming from outside as well. Mm. But uh, finally, yeah, the chase must must be cut inside. Anyway, but you you have of course a significant Kareni expat community in places far away from Australia to the United States, Europe. But 
the neighboring countries will always matter a lot more than the faraway countries for Myanmar and for Karenia state. Would you have any message or request from Thailand, ASEAN, the neighboring countries to try and make them better understand the recent dynamics and developments in, in your country and in Karenia state? We do, we do. Especially locally, we have been enjoying a lot in a good relationship with the local authorities and the local Thai people as well. Uh, not only the Thai people, Thai authorities, uh, even the army as well. We have a lot in a heavy enjoy uh, a better understanding and helping each other in many different ways. But in relation to policy made by the government, that will be sort of the limitation that uh, we are facing, still facing today. Uh, even now officially able to engage with the Thai government. Yeah, they do understand when our cause mm. and also as we share the border, uh, as we are the neighbor, yeah, we have to help and support each other. They do anyway. But uh, there are still some problems happening on the ground. Together, we have to handle all, all those are some problems that happening on the ground, along the border as well. Mm. Because all the problems happening along the border, we have to handle together. Mm. We have to consult together. Mm. We have to look into that matter and also how best we can work mm. together as mm. sort of to normalize the border security and mm. stability as well. Mm. Uh, as far as I understand, the threat for the sovereignty of the timeline is that uh, the human trafficking mm. and drug trafficking and also <clears throat> infectious disease along the border. That will be the key concern of the Thai government and the people as mm. well. We do understand we're on that. We have been cooperating with that as well. Mm even now uh, according to the policy, but uh, on the ground, yeah, we do hope we do have uh, so many ways mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. here. The, by now, they have, have more better understanding on our cause, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. at this time. Well, that's very encouraging. And overall, a big message of uh, dialogue and cooperation in all directions. Uh, that has been, in a way, the secret of success of where, how far you have brought the Karenni state movement and uh, we as International IDEA we are proud and happy to support uh, as a part of the broader effort of building federal democracy in Myanmar and we will certainly continue to try and engage with you and uh, help you build bridges and find partnerships around the world. Thank you very much for this conversation and thank, thank you. you very much for watching and uh, we will post some links uh, from, with more information about Karenni state and uh, hope that you will also be able to support the efforts that are taking place here in this part of Myanmar. Thank you.